Okay, this is a video um, about how to exploit fish at 10 no limit. The reason I'm playing 10 no limit is because um, uh, I was playing two tables at 16 and L, and it was a bit slow. Um, but given that I'm learning some stuff still, I didn't want to play four tables at 16 while I was still incorporating some new stuff into my game, so I'm playing four tables at 10 no limit instead at Zoom on PokerStars. And um, this video is going to be about exploiting fish. At 10 the limit, I think it's probably the most important concept of 10 the limit because there are so many fish um, and they're so easy to exploit. Um, they'll tell you a lot of things about their hand with their bet sizes, and um, it's important that you know what um, the size of their bets means in relation to the strength of their hand uh, and how best to get value from the fish um, based on that information they give you for their bet sizes. So um, this first hand, um, I'm against a fish. It's actually a 400 big blind deep, uh, 400 big blind pot, 200 big blind deep hand. Um, uh, so I'm just going to quickly run through these things. Um, I get a limp from a a fish, obviously, um, and then it's raised to to four and a half big blinds from uh, a fairly Aggressive but decent looking pair in cutoff and is called by the fish in question um, in the small blind. I think this is a pretty mandatory call um, and fish calls along as well. Um, I don't think there's too much to talk about there. Um, possibly could make a case because of this guy's um, decently high raising percentages, um, especially in the cutoff, he's opening 44. Um, this to take it as a as a as sort of a bluffing three bet, but um, I think calling here and letting the fish come in and trying to flip a big hand with green pilots is the best decision. Not too much to talk about that, I don't think anyway. Um, and the main focus of this video is going to be uh, reading fish's bet sizes and um, appropriately taking the course of action to get value. So um, flop is nine queen jack, obviously a half decent flop in my hand. Um, and fish leads, small blind fish leads for 86 cents into 180. Um, now, um, I think a lot of people may make the mistake of raising here. And I don't think it's terrible. Um, and I think I would be inclined to raise here sometimes, but um, there are a few reasons why I wouldn't do that. Um, firstly, obviously, is going to be that. Um, there's it's a rainbow board, um, and my hand doesn't need as much protection. But um, as per the purposes of this video, the bet size is the main reason why I don't want to be raising this 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 bet and getting more money in now. Even though we are really deep, and obviously I'd really like to get more money in, um, right now that is not going to be the best decision because this bet size from this particular kind of player is indicative of. Um, a weak hand. So um, there's no real explanation to why he would be betting into three other people with a weaker hand, but um, as from my experience, and I do have a decent amount of hands at 10 the limit from back when I used to play and from my time playing now, um, this guy is going to turn up with a hand that can't face a raise here, and I'm going to raise um, two people out of the pot as well behind me if I choose to raise here. Um, I just think this is going to be one pair of hands um, way, way too often. Um, uh, fish will tend to bet smaller um, with weaker hands to get away with either thinner value or um, a, a cheaper bluff, and they're completely imbalanced. Um, the same goes for them when they bet close to pot. They are completely imbalanced in favour of value. I find that most times when I call rivers, I've pretty much stopped doing it now. I barely ever call light when they bet pot. It's usually about 75% pot, which they tend to bluff as a rule. Um, when they pot it, they usually just have it and they're trying to make up for lost value from previous streets. Anyway, um, based on that, uh, I think this is just an easy call. First, I let some maybe a fish behind me go spastic, or um, but mainly because against this guy, um, I expect him to be betting more with a, nut a nutted hand 
um, that I would be able to get value from now, but I expect him to have just a single pair hands in this position. Um, so just call, and the turn is. Oh, I think I get one more caller, um, and I'm happy with this as a situation, given my call approximation. I think if I raise this more, more often than not, I'm going to see um, uh, this twofold, threefold, pretty quickly, and um, uh, more often than not, a large percentage of the time too large of a percentage to make it a good bet. Even though it looks like you really want to be getting more money and obviously with this hand against such a um, such a perfect opposition. Um you want big hands against fish at ten and L, that's what you want. You mean you don't have to um, you can play um pots against the regs but you just don't need to as frequently because there are so many fish um, but it's so important to know what their bet sizes mean, how you can exploit them and get value from your nut hands. Uh, so turns an ace Spades, which is obviously um, a great card um, for my hand. Uh, as far as this guy's range, they call the small blind with the 45 cents. I wouldn't expect him to three bet um, his uh, single bet hands that have now made two pair, like ace jack, ace nine, ace queen. He may three bet ace queen, but I don't think these kind of players do that that often. I think he has all the two pair ace hands in his ha in his range. Um, like I said, I don't think he has a set or a straight place in this flop uh, bet sizing. They always want to get more money in, especially when with this deep. They always want to get more more value in quicker. Um, and had he put more money in on the flop, say he bet 150 or something, I would be absolutely uh, raising um, based on that information. Uh, so when this turn comes, I don't expect him that often to... I mean, a, a decent amount of time I think this, he's, this is going to give him two pair. Um, not, not an especially great amount. Um, I think there's a lot of like king jack still and stuff like that, just single pair hands or or complete nothing, um, uh, both of which I don't want to be raising against on the flop. Um, letting him catch up seems by far the best decision. Um, and when he bets pot, um, per my reasoning on the flop, uh, I think that um, this is just a sign that a very obvious sign, like I've said, that Fish just loves his hand, completely loves his hand, um, and this is now the time where we can be starting to add more money into the pot. So um, I would expect him, to, when this bet size comes, um, this narrows his range pretty significantly to, given my reasoning on the flop, um, that he doesn't have a set. Uh, I'm very unlikely. He's not going to have aces ever, if pretty much ever, um, given his pre-flop action. Um, I don't think he has a set based on his flops bet sizing, uh, based on my experience with fish. So this turn bet makes me feel like he's picked up a hand on the turn, um, which is going to be ace jack, ace queen, ace nine. I think that is just a huge part of his range on this turn. I don't think he's ever bluffing with this bet size based on my reasoning on the flop uh, and based on my reads of fish. They just tend to bluff for less and value bet for more and he's just trying to get more money in the pot which obviously I'm delighted about because I have the nuts um, so my decision here is to call or raise uh, looking at the amounts that we both have in our stack um, so he has 14 left uh, he's put 418 and there's 856 in the pot after that bet um, looking at how this plays out so if I was to call there's 12 12 something in there, 12, um, 64 in the pot. Um, 1264 in the pot with him having 14 left, um, which is okay ish, but I want to make him feel like um, there is uh, basically. When he bets, when he bets 418, he leaves me with the decision of how to get the rest of his stack, and I think it's going to be fairly easy. But I think the best way to do it, um, given this player and his bet size, is to make a small raise on this turn because I, I think that with those hands, after I call this bet, he's going to bet something like. I don't, I really don't think this matters too much, but I think he might bet something like, um, you know, seven or eight. 
but uh, rather than overshove on the river because at least those, those hands aren't. I mean, when, when I call, they don't look as fantastic. Um, but I, I like min min raising here. Basically, is what I end up doing, and um, because I think all those hands that I mentioned that are, I think are just all of his range, pretty much. Um, Ace Jack, Ace Queen, Ace Nine. Uh, will all call me here, given this player, they'll all call me here, um, he's not too concerned about my range, because of his, because he's a fish, um, so I expect to just get a, a call here, and then um, this gives me a much better size, basically I think that he can get away from my river shove, if he was to bet small on the river, I, if I just call turn and he bets small on the river, like five dollars, and I shove, um, I think he, even he may be able to fold sometimes. But when I min click the turn, and he, all his two pairs, all, all his two pair hands are calling. Should he not have a two pair hand? Should he have like um, just a random king jack? If he has king jack, I don't expect him to ever do that. Like I expect, I think most of his range is going to be two pair um, with the ace, and that was my reasoning when I played the hand, and that makes me. Wanted to that made me want to min raise the turn to get him because I know he's not folding two pound the turn with the ace whatever he has um, and once he gets to this river with it providing it's fairly blank which this river is um, he's not going to want to fold for nine eighty five more when there's twenty one in the middle um, whereas I think should I raise the turn bigger um, he may be more inclined to fold not massively more inclined to fold but um, Slightly more, and should I just call the turn, it leaves him with over a pot size bet, um, and it makes it slightly more difficult to get the rest of that. Um, if he was to bet and I shove, I look ridiculously strong, even though I look ridiculously strong on the turn. This kind of player is just not folding two pair on the turn ever, um, whereas I give him more credit to be able to do that on a river. Uh, so, this just ends up going, he just shoves, which obviously I'm doing if he checks, um, and I obviously call instantly and he has two pair with the ace and I, um, so basically um, the main thing to take away from this is just a few points. When fish bet smaller, um, it usually means thinner value or bluffs, um, or hands they're not as happy with, and when they bet close to pot, it almost always means that they love their hand and um, are more than happy to you know, get it in, but there's still some thought process to be done when they bet pot as to what is the best way of getting the rest of their money in the pot. Um, and I think this was the clearly best way of doing it. This hand, and um, I have one more, which I'll quickly run, run down. Um, one more quick hand example. Um, let me just sorry, move this out of the way. So, um. Under the gun raises, I don't have many hands on him. I mix up between three betting and calling here, but I think calling is reasonable. Um, and there's a fish in the big barn, which I'm more than happy to bring into the pot. Um, and this is going to be another hand example of getting value from fish. And this is fairly simple um, and, um, you know, it doesn't need too much explaining, but there's, I feel like you can miss a lot of value playing hands in a certain way. Um, against fish, uh, when it's a lot easier to manipulate their stack into the middle when you have big hands. Um, so it goes check check, and this is a spot where I think most people will bet almost always. Um, and I think that you could make a very strong case and probably be right a lot of the time um, when you say that. But I decided actually to check. Um, reason being, um, it just I like to have some. Given that I think that probably under the gun is a reasonable player, I like to have some flushes in my range when I check about the turn and a diamond hits the river. Hits the, when I check about the flop and a, a diamond hits the turn, I like to have some flushes. Um, and nut flushes are uh, even better one to have. Um, I don't need to semi bluff as much because I have two overs as well, and um, I'm just happy to, to let a turn come off and um, go from there really. Um, so. I think both are fine, but I think this is just uh, for balancing reasons against against under the gun, um, rather than against the fish. Um, but I can also expect him to 
I mean, even though there's, they don't have a, hardly any level of thinking, I'd be very careful about giving credit to any credit to their level of thinking. Um, I think they're capable of knowing when I check back the club, I unlikely have a flush draw. And that's going to make them um, overvalue their um, you know, single pair jack hands or two pair hands or sets when I do hit a diamond on the turn. Um, so that's the merit of that. Against under the gun, it's for balance reasons. Um, I like to have some flushes in my range when uh, flush draws in my range when I check back the turn, so I can have some nut flushes on the turn, which I'm never supposed to really have, um, and get value that way from just weaker hands from under the gun. Or against the fish, I can expect him to um, perceive his hand to be stronger based on my flop action that I check back the flop when most people are usually c bang with a flush draw here as a semi bluff. I just think this this hand uh, you can go either way, but I actually like I actually really like checking back here in this position situation. So I do turn the nuts, um, which is fortunate, uh, and I see an, a bit of ninety one from the fish. Undergun folds, um, and now we can reap the rewards of our flop check. I think that this guy um, now obviously based on what I've said in the last hand, this guy loves his hand. Um, he's bet post a pot, which always means that fish are really happy with their hand. Um, should he bet like 50 here, it's almost always going to be thin value or um, a bluff. Pretty much in this spot, when he bets 50 or something like that, I expect it to be 90% of the time a bluff, based on my experience. And I'd probably be raising here with the bare ace of diamonds against that kind of play. Um, but in this situation, he bets pot and... Um, because I check back the, t the flop, um, I don't expect him to give me that many flushes. I think, um, like I said, I'm careful to not give people too much credit, but I think this guy um, uh, is capable. I think most people are capable of knowing that when I check back the flop, I don't often have any flushes in my range on this turn. Um, which makes it a good bluffing card when the flush card does come, or um, possibly under the gun, if, if Fish was to check in the big line. Um, but in this situation, um, it makes it so that whenever this fish has, like I explained, a decent hand, um, jack hands or two pair hands or sets, which he decided that he wanted to check raise a flop with but didn't get a chance to, um, I can um, exploit the fact that he doesn't give me many flushes. Um, Obviously, in this situation, I do have a flush, and given that his bet sizing, as I explained, is indicative of him having a hand that he's really happy with, not necessarily a strong hand um, for a regular player, but for a fish, it doesn't matter if, if it's relatively strong to the board or not, it's just that he loves it and he's not folding. This is this bet size is just never a, a bet size that's getting bet folded, or um, never a bet size that's indicative of anything other than the hand that he loves, um, which makes my decision very, very easy, which is to raise. Um, in being in this position, if, I, if he had bet 50 um, or 60 or something like that, um, I would probably be always. I think I raise sometimes, but I'd be much more inclined to just call um, than I would be in this situation where he bets 90 because I expect him to have um, a lot of bluffs, which he may not give up on the river, and then I'll just try and get my value on the river um, if there is any value to be had. But I don't think there's too much value on raising a turn where I expect him to be. Of fifty cent or sixty cent bluff, uh, sixty fifty or sixty percent um, bet to be um, value ever. So I need to, you know, to just be calling there. If I'm going to be doing this against, if I'm going to be trying to exploit his betting um, sizes, then I need to be able to um, just call with ace queen of diamonds in this position when he bets that amount on the turn. Um, but given he bets pot. Um, it's an easy raise because he loves his hand, and this is what fish do when they love their hands. They bet pot and they don't fold. Um, so he gets it in pretty quickly within like about five seconds. It's just a snap, and he's throwing dead. Um, and I do, like I said, I am careful about giving them credit for knowing for, for hand reading, but um, I just think that it's a very basic concept that when I check back the Flop, I'm unlikely to have that many flushes. And I think even this kind of player is capable of that level of thinking. Um, and it just means that I get him to way overvalue this kind of hand on the turn where he thinks 
or I have a jack, and I also have a seven in case you know when he when he sees my race, he's like, well, I always have, oh, I also have a seven, um, in case I'm not ahead with my just my jack, and I don't expect him to have that many flushes because he checked by the flop. Um, I can comfortably credit him with that level of thinking, I think, um, and I'm pretty sure that that's uh, why I've got the money in in this flop on this turn, sorry, um, and I'm pretty happy about. Both hands, obviously, I had the nuts in both, and that's nice, well and good. But I think um, there's a distinct possibility that had I not played them um, with Fish's best sizes in mind, um, and I think it's a really important concept in Terra now because there's so many people to exploit for their imbalanced best sizing. I think had I not played them this way, I may not have got all the money in um, against hands that, when you think about it, are, you know, really not. That strong relative to the boards that I managed to get them to put all their money in on. Uh, so um, that's will be it for this video. Um, I hope anyone that watches it uh, can give any comments that they like. Um, and yeah, thanks.